Over the last half century, mankind has increasingly been expanding into space. However, a hidden danger lurks in the darkness, and it causes the materials to degrade over time, leading to an inevitable death of the expensive hardware. Hello space enthusiasts! You are watching Captain Corrosion and in this video you will learn how radiation contributes to the corrosion of materials in space. My name is Maido and I am a material scientist specialized in corrosion, nanotechnology and materials characterization. So let's get started! Electromagnetic radiation is something we all know too well. It lights the night sky and brings light to our planet. In space, however, it can also contribute to the degradation of materials, and the damaging effect depends on its energy, intensity and how deep it can penetrate into the material. First, let's discuss the energy of electromagnetic radiation. As you can see from the equation, a higher energy radiation also has a shorter wavelength. This is important because the type of interaction between the exciting radiation and matter depends on the wavelength of the radiation. A variety of spectroscopy techniques are based on these interactions, and this allows us to obtain valuable information about different materials. Although most of these methods are considered non-destructive, the general rule is that higher energy radiation, which has a shorter wavelength, causes more damage to materials. Therefore, based on the energy, we can divide the electromagnetic radiation into two groups, ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Infrared and visible light lack the energy to remove electrons from an atom, so at low intensities they hardly do any damage to most materials. Still, the energy of infrared radiation can be absorbed by the molecules, and this causes a change to their rotational vibrational movements. Visible light has more energy than infrared radiation, and it can briefly excite the electrons of atoms to higher energy states. When these electrons return to lower states, radiation is emitted, which has the same or slightly different energy as the exciting radiation. Although infrared and visible light cannot remove electrons from atoms, they can still do serious damage to a material if the intensity is sufficient. Over here we have a piece of metal which was tested to be used for making the inner walls of fusion reactors. After exposing it to high energy plasma, similar to real conditions, it was studied by laser induced breakdown spectroscopy. So basically, the sample was locally irradiated with a 1064 nanometer wavelength laser beam. And in that brief moment, the temperature in the studied site went up to 15,000 degrees Celsius, instantly evaporating the tungsten coating. The actual crater can be seen in detail with the help of a scanning electron microscope which uses electrons instead of photons to create a high-resolution image of the studied surface. Although laser weapons are fairly common in science fiction movies, the real damage to spacecraft is done by ionizing radiation, such as ultraviolet light, X-rays and gamma rays. In this case, the energy of the radiation is already sufficient to knock out electrons from atoms in a process known as photoelectric effect. Ultraviolet radiation generally doesn't penetrate very deep into the material, but it is capable of dislocating the outer shell electrons of near-surface atoms. As a result, these atoms become ionized and can more readily react with other compounds, such as oxygen, leading to accelerated corrosion. Polymers are therefore most vulnerable to this type of combined effect. X-rays and gamma rays have more energy than ultraviolet light, allowing them to penetrate deeper into the material, causing the photoelectric effect even in deeper layers. This time, however, the energy of X-rays and gamma rays is already sufficient to remove inner shell electrons from atoms. As a result, a vacant spot is created in the atom 
and almost immediately a relaxation process takes place, where a higher shell electron falls in to occupy the vacant spot. In this process, the excess energy is released as X-ray radiation, which may interact again with the surrounding matter and cause another photoelectric effect. Anyhow, if a material is irradiated with X-rays and gamma rays, then the gradual degradation of the surface due to the combined effect with oxygen is less severe than in the case of ultraviolet light, because most of the interactions take place in deeper layers. So the damage is done to the bulk material, where it can break chemical bonds or cause defects in the crystal structure. This means that most electronic devices are quite vulnerable to high-energy electromagnetic radiation because they are based on crystalline semiconductor materials. In the case of gamma rays in the energy range between 100 kV and 10 MV, a process known as Compton scattering takes place. In that process, only a portion of the exciting radiation's energy is used to knock out an electron from the atom. The remainder of the energy is emitted as a new, lower energy gamma photon, in a different direction. This released gamma photon of course can interact with the surrounding matter again and knock out more electrons. Now, if the energy of the primary gamma photon is at least 1.02 mega electron volts, then something amazing can happen. When such a photon interacts with the nucleus of an atom, then the photon's energy is actually converted into matter, in the form of an electron-positron pair. In the case you didn't know, then a positron is basically the antimatter version of the electron, so it has a positive charge. Now, if the energy of the primary gamma photon is higher than 1.02 mega electron volts, then the excess energy is simply added as kinetic energy to the created particle couple. Anyhow, the positron will sooner or later combine with an electron, and matter is converted into energy once more. But in this case, two gamma photons of at least 0.51 mega electron volts are created and those are capable of causing even more ionization of the surrounding matter. If the energy of the photon is even higher, however, let's say tens or even hundreds of mega electron volts, then the very nucleus of the atom can be ripped apart in two processes, known as photodisintegration and photofission. In both cases, the gamma photon is absorbed by the nucleus causing the latter one to go into an excited state. During photodisintegration, a single proton, neutron or alpha particle is ejected from the nucleus. In the case of photofission, however, the nucleus is split into multiple fragments. These are some of the main interaction types between electromagnetic radiation and matter, which cause the degradation of materials in space. Now you might think that all the damaging radiation comes from our sun, other stars, black holes and cosmic events, but actually some of it is created locally on the material surface when the spacecraft is bombarded by energetic cosmic particles. It should also be noted that high-energy radiation causes a cascade of ionizing interactions inside the material, and these will happen until the energy has escaped the material as radiation and secondary particles, or until it is converted into heat. Anyhow, it is possible to partially shield the sensitive electronic devices against radiation by surrounding them with a casing of high atomic number materials, such as lead or gold. Such plating can completely block lower energy ionizing radiation and absorb some of the higher energy gamma rays, which will increase the lifespan of the protected components. Space, however, is not the only place where radiation causes damage to electronics. Down here on the planet Earth lies the greatest, most sophisticated creation ever built by mankind, the Large Hadron Collider also known as LHC. In this gigantic machine, a vast amount of energy is pumped into protons 
accelerating them nearly to the speed of light. These protons are then set on a collision course with each other, and upon collision they are broken into even smaller particles. However, in LHC, also high-energy electromagnetic radiation is being constantly created, and this slowly degrades the super-expensive detectors and other nearby electronics, which cannot be shielded. That's the basics of this type of corrosion in space, so thank you for watching. If you want to see more similar videos in the future, then hit the subscribe button over here and check out the Captain Corrosion YouTube channel. Also, be sure to see the video's description for additional information and leave your thoughts and questions in the comment section below.